Hey, it's Willie Armelini from Flowers and Scents with your floral industry buzz. Today we're going to interview F.J. Trzowski of Continental Floor Greens. He's the vice president of sales, and uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on with greens. Greens come from all over the place. They come from Costa Rica. They come from the northwest of the U.S. They come from uh, Florida. They come from all over the place. And uh, Continental Floral Greens has been doing it for a long time. So let's find out more about the greens business. F.J. Trzowski, nice Polish boy. Um, That's right. Polish Irish. Polish Irish. There you go. Come on, my mom would be offended. Got to get the Fleming in there too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and uh, what the hell does F.J. stand for? Francis Joseph. Francis Joseph Truskowski Jr. Or you can just call me F.J. It's your choice. I, <laughs> now I understand where F.J. came from. Right. Um, all right. So look. Uh, you and I have known each other for a long time and have bounced around, I don't know, a lot of countries and a lot of cities in the, in the U.S. and around the world. And uh, so you landed there and uh, you've been there and, and apparently breathed some life into it because uh, the Continental Floral Greens has had a little bit of a story past. And maybe you yes. should share a little bit of that with us. Yeah. So seven years ago, uh, Jim Milgard purchased Continental Floral Greens from the Everett family and Larson Everett. Had, uh, and I had the pleasure of meeting Larson Everett. Larson started it by bringing in greens across from Mexico into San Antonio. And Larson's one of those gentlemen that he's, he's in his 90s now, but he has that sparkle in his eyes. When you, when you see him, you're just like, oh my gosh, I want to hang out with this guy. I can learn <laughs> some stuff. So Larson had started the company. His sons were running the company. I think they ran into a little bit of financial troubles as a lot of flower companies did in the... Uh, in the 2000s and around 2008. And Jim Milgar tells a funny story. He goes, I, I met him and Jim wanted, he was doing a little bit of Northwest Greens himself and wanted to see if he could possibly help the Everett's. And he said he went to lunch with the Everett's and he, as he tells the story, he goes, I walked out and I shook hands and he goes, I think I just bought that damn thing. <laughs> so he did buy that damn thing. And uh, I joined him pretty soon after he had picked up Jose Porras, who came from Grupo Talk. Uh, down in Guatemala and brought a lot of greens experience to the to the equation. Uh, we put a team together and we sort of looked at the big picture and said, what do we have to do? I think there's a great, great brand here still, and we've got some great customers. How do we keep servicing them? So we went through some major changes. We were, we were doing our own trucking at that point. We said, we got to get out of the trucking business. There's somebody I know with the name Armalini that we should call and check in with him and as I, I've, Willie, I called your brother David, and David and Carl came down and met with us and said, "Yeah, your customers between us and Prime, everyone's going to be covered." So, we had to make some big changes. Um, we ended up closing the San Antonio operation. Kind of didn't make sense to have Coastal Farms bring it into the center country to truck it back out. Back out, yeah. Yeah, we opened a Miami facility. Um, so we did a lot in the last seven years. A lot. And recently you picked up Hiawatha. Yes, we did. So we decided we, we don't do enough in July every year. It's kind of slow for greens, joking. So last year, two, last year we, we ended up managing, taking over management of Oregon Roses. And Oregon Roses uh, fell in line just because same thing. I think COVID really smacked them a little bit. And we started talking just to see, hey, let's see what this farm's all about. I'd heard really good things about it. And the name... They had grown roses years and years ago, but right now they're really known for their Oregonia, boxwood, camellia, and flowering branches. So it sort of fell fell under our hmm. green story. So we like that. We like the feel of it. Uh, ended up working out a deal with Katie so that we manage the the property and and take we're responsible for sales and management. And then same time we start talking to the guys at Hiawatha and Larry and Dick were getting ready to retire and yeah. sort of said what makes sense. And one of our big things is we look at it and go, is it a good fit? And can we bring in their people and, and add them to our family and, and keep the tradition going? And Hiawatha was sort of a natural one. They're very, very big in Christmas, great reputation, great brand. I always said when I was out in the market selling Continental, if I saw, if I saw Hiawatha or Tufel or Dutchman Tree Farm, I was like, these guys get quality. These guys are. Yeah. So the Hiawatha one made made a lot of sense, um, a lot of sense for us. 
Yeah, and I like those people. I've seen them at the 100 conventions too. And um, yes, uh, nice, just nice folks. I said, I tell the story that I had Corey, I saw him at a Safeway show and I felt bad. Um, Corey does their sort of their mass market sales. And I saw him at a Safeway show and his product hadn't arrived. And I Ooh. was like, if he doesn't get it, I'm going to give him some. Nope. Like, I'm not going to let him have an empty booth. Empty booth. That's nice. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's a good group. We're really lucky. Good group of people. So, look, greens are grown all over the place. Uh, I'll give you a little history with me. Uh, growing up in the trucking business in New Jersey before we ended up in Florida, uh, I used to handle what was, what we call them Western greens. It was jewel foliage. And it was Pacific Evergreen, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, was the two companies, and they would truck it in. Yeah, somebody would bring it in. It wasn't even our truck. They'd bring it into the Vineland, New Jersey, and we put it in our little cooler, and then local wholesalers would come and pick it up. It was totally different than anything I had ever seen. Huck and Salal and I don't. I don't. You got, all, you got all the terms. Look at you. Yeah, Huck and Salal. That's what I remember. Term. They're just big, heavy wax boxes. Yep. And they would sort of last forever. So uh, we, we uh, handled them for a long time. But, you know, you have, and I've unloaded a whole bunch of trailers with uh, big fat cigars of uh, TP Greens coming out of Guatemala. Guatemala, yeah, cool. yeah, that country. <laughs> and, um, and and I've, I've uh, you know, obviously the, the leather leaf in Florida. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's grown all over the place. And it's essentially, apparently you're consolidating some of that. Correct. And like you said, it's, it's happening everywhere. It's not as sexy as flowers. My wife complains a little bit, so I have to buy her flowers. I can't just bring home a box of Salal. But um, that's what we did is we, we've got the Pacific Northwest stuff. So we've got, uh, we as a grower, we, we have land leases over 2 million acres where we go and harvest the Salal and the Huck and the Bear Grass. We have 9,000 acres of high, high mountain new, uh, of noble fir. Um, that is nice that we own that crop. Um, for Christmas production. We have farms in California. We have farms in Florida. We have farms in Oregon. And we do, we have a strategic partnership with Grupo Talk out of Guatemala. That's how you say it, Guatemala. Uh, Thank you. And um, they have farms in Guatemala and Costa Rica. So we've partnered with them with the idea we do want to be the one-stop shop for uh, mass market and wholesalers, their greens needs. Is this stuff cultivated or are these people, as I remember, it used to be, uh, you know, you had a plot of land and you'd send your workers out to, and they'd come back at the end of the day or end of the week or something full of greens. It's a, it's a combination. The Northwest greens for the most, we call it wild harvest. Um, it's, it's interesting. People have looked at trying to produce Salau sort of in a farm situation. It does very, very well naturally in the Pacific Northwest. It actually, there's a spine of it that all the way runs all the way down into South America, but it's not a big enough crop really for a commercial, to make it commercially viable. Hmm. Um, the Pacific Northwest, it's it's a weed. It grows everywhere. So it's a weed. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's a good weed. And speaking well, of that, with all these fires and everything going on, uh, you've had issues with that or what? We've been okay. Um, I'll tell you this, this year, the big thing for us was the Pacific Northwest got hit by some really warm Heat. temperatures. Heat. Yeah, we had, we had 104, we had 114 at the Forest Grove farm, which, um, you're okay from a production standpoint, like Forest Grove, we have irrigation. We could turn the irrigation on and cool okay. the crop down. So we're okay there. But the Noble, we got lucky. The high mountain stuff, up our, ours is all around Mount St. Helens. I think we're in good shape. Some of the, we call it lowland Noble. There's a little bit of damage. I think Douglas is going to be, Douglas fir, you could see it. I went up to Mount St. Helens a couple of weeks ago. You could see it on the way up. It was burnt. Uh, a lot of the red cedar. The, the good thing I would say is that it's obvious that it's damaged. It's not one of those, eh, yeah. should I harvest it or not? It's, this is no good. So I think it's going to be, we say every Christmas it's going to be a tight year. I think this is going to add to, it's going to be a tight year for Christmas product. Hey, is Mount St. Helens, uh, is it quieted down now? Or are you uh, tempting yes. to there? Yes. <laughs> no, uh, hopefully we're not. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. And you can imagine it's, we're growing in volcanic ash. So the trees are just, happy as happy can be. Um, we've actually looked at doing, we do some planting ourselves and nature usually kicks our butt and does a better job of replanting than we can. Yeah, has it all sort of regrown after all that uh, yeah. explosion back way back when? Yep, they were told, all the big timber companies were told to get in there and clean it up real quick. And they carried out massive truckloads of stuff. And then um, the timber companies went in there and sort of planted, a lot of them planted Noble thinking, I think it was gonna be good for a pulp crop, which it's not. 
So that's why our gym picked up, picked up the, initially picked up 4,000 acres and just grabbed another okay. 5,000 last couple of years. All right. So then you have Guatemala, or in this case, you have that production coming in as well. So you've got it pretty much all covered. And then you're shipping out of Miami mostly or what? Yeah, we do a lot. It was interesting. We did not, when Continental, when we first bought Continental, we did not have a facility in Miami. So we had that we have the farm up in Deland and right. we would do some shipping out of Pearson area. Um, but you're always a day, you're waiting, you're a day. And yep. you have wholesalers call and say, hey, I'd, I'd love some leather today. So we looked at and said, guys, we've got to have a Miami facility. You got so, yep. but we're really lucky. We have a great uh, manager down there. Your Andy Palenzuela manages our facility, basically started us. We started you know, with a couple of pallet places uh, in someone's corner and sort of grew and grew and grew um, to the point now that we have a large facility um, and you need that. Everyone needs that same day service. Well, particularly now, nobody's inventorying a whole lot of products. So if you need it, uh, get, can you get it on a truck today? And, and as we know, flying greens is never a, a productive, uh, profitable situation. Uh, unless you have to have it, but you're not going to you're not going to make money on it. But at least you might have it. The one thing I did hear, which I thought was interesting, is I did hear more talk about standing orders at the Wolfsa uh, show in Miami mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago or months ago. That uh, I think it's because everyone's so busy right now. There's you look at greens as we're such a staple. You need them. It's not they're there when you need them, right? Yeah, and so I think the the sort of we're we're seeing a little bit of a resurgence in people talking about standing orders because you need them. And it's I look at it as as a as a wholesaler, you've got to watch your time management and your team's time management. And if it's greens, it's something you say, guys, what do we basically need week to week? Let's have that on standing order. Then we can pick up the ex extra stuff. Um, and the focus needs to be on, from a wholesaler standpoint, it needs to be on your roses and your your lilies and your, your high dollar crops. Yes, unfortunately, uh, greens tend to take a backseat to all that, but they are the fundamentals in an arrangement, essentially. Oh my God, thanks, Willie. We're gonna use that. We're gonna, <laughs> exactly. say we're gonna use that. Yeah, they I are. like that a lot. They, they are, are. they're the base. They are, they're the fundamentals, of, you know, and then you build upon that. So, and I noticed you have, like uh, many people have, you have your sort of drop in bouquet or just add flowers bouquet. That yep. always made total sense to me. Um, and I know that, you know, like in my family's case, they were encouraging you to ship your greens early like before Valentine's or Mother's Day, get them out of the way. So all the flowers, you know, have a, have room yep. and, and your product yep. is going to hold and you got it in your cooler then. So it's, it's a better situation. Um, so what do you see? Is there going to be some shortages? Maybe uh, you're I think it's going to be I think it's going to be tight. We're trying to figure out as I think there will be a little bit. You know, we we harvest eight or nine million pounds of noble a year and we sell millions of pounds to other wreath makers and bulk guys. And we've gotten a lot more phone calls than we typically get um, uh, this year. So I think it's hard to say. I think it's going to be a tight market. I think the the good thing is I think people have realized, especially with COVID, adding to the factors that people did give us pre-orders so our, our pre-order cutoff is this coming friday the 27th of august and people are like how can that be you know that sounds so early but think about it we we basically have to look at october we start harvesting the beginning of october and then you're basically saying what do we need to produce and do we have production time and enough people to produce it it becomes an hours equation so you're looking you're just doing math going do we physically have enough time to get these orders done and um, you hinted about labor there. Uh, you having trouble getting labor? We do a lot of H2A and a lot of H2B programs. Uh, and it's, that's really important for us. And we, we actually sort of invest, we're constantly investing in the future. So we find that when you bring someone new up, we've had people that have been coming up and doing it well before. These we are did. exchange programs, I take exchange it. You're programs, bringing yeah. it from South America or, or yep, Central from America. Guatemala and Central and then Mexico. And they come up and they make our reads and they, it's a great opportunity for them and it's great for us. Um, but what we're constantly doing is we're saying, if we need more workers, we have to bring in sort of untrained or new guys every year. And finally, and we look at it from a production standpoint, they're not really there. They're not cost effective, right. but we have to do that every year to make sure we have enough workers for the next year, the next year, the next yeah, year. Yeah, um, working uh, uh, workers are a challenge. Everybody's sort of struggling. Um, and, and you know, the market, uh, the market's crazy hot, as we well know. <laughs> I oh, just yeah. put out an email here just a few minutes ago that, uh, uh, and, and getting some feedback on that. And essentially saying, look, the market's tight, production's low, demand is high, logistics are screwed up <laughs> in many cases, they're challenged. 
the family's having trouble with getting drivers. The airlines are expensive. Everything has gotten expensive. However, uh, the title to my article was that the what a great time to be in floral. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you no, can't I agree make completely. Money, yeah, if you can't make money now, uh, then then you're in the wrong business, perhaps. Uh, no, and I think we we all see it. It's funny, you know. You go out and you talk to anybody in any other industry, like, oh, are you having any supply issues? Oh yeah, are you having? Oh yeah, we're all having them. Uh, the one thing I do have to commend is our the buyers across the board, wholesale uh, and mass market are recognizing when we need to do a price increase. It's not because we want to do it; we have to do it. You know, they're they're seeing it. You know, the price of fuel is going up, like you said what your what your brother david's going through as far as trucking wise is is insane you know trying to find drivers we recognize it um people are being flexible and and at least a little bit a little understanding yeah i'm hearing from my my miami counterparts saying you know it's pretty okay price went up okay How, can i get them <laughs> well can you get them and, and good luck finding uh pallets i mean pallets right now oh yeah. pallets oh my favorite subject yes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Who would have thought, right? Uh, who would have thought? Yeah, and and there's, and unfortunately, there's pallets sitting in fields somewhere in Ohio or something. They don't know what the yeah. hell to do with them all, and uh, but they're not worth bringing back. Anyway, FJ, so how do people find you? Uh, I said CF um, CFGreens.com. CFGreens.com. Yep. I'll throw that up on the site, and um, so they call uh, or they go to the website first, and then go from there. Go to the website. There's a you can log in for a contact us. Goes to info at CF Greens. Goes to myself and Sarah, our marketing director, and we. You want to throw an eight hundred number at me, perhaps? I don't think I have an eight hundred number. Okay, don't so give me one of those. Don't give me one. Give me a phone number. My my phone number is two zero eight. I'll give you my phone number even two zero eight seven two zero one nine two five two zero eight seven two zero one nine two five. Call FJ and buy some greens. Heck yeah! Right. Those fundamental oh, things we like. Willie, what's your favorite green? I'm stealing a Bill of Fever where Bill. Oh, a Bill of Fever green. one. Um, my favorite green. Wow. You know, I sort of really like these Monastero, uh, Monastero, Monastero, leaves. Monastero leaves. Yeah, they're cool. These gigantic. That would green. fit you. That's big and crazy. It's and big and wild. Yeah, you can wrap yourself up in it or something. Yeah, that works for you. That works for you. So, yeah, I like those. Um, you know, I've, been, I've grown up with leather leaf. I mean, it's it's uh, still popular. It's still, still a popular a, thing. Still a big, big, big crop for us. Still popular. And uh, right now, around here, uh, all the magnolia trees. So the magnolia blooms uh, are really cool. We we actually I didn't slip that in. We picked up a farm in Magno, uh, magnolia farm in Florida this year also. Uh, magnolia, you saw the leaves, or you said you actually do it with the, with the bloom? Can you do anything? No, with just, the, bloom? the bloom's a little bit tough to handle so we just do it for the foliage alone it's just really popular in the fall and christmas season yeah well my friend uh, nice to talk to you and uh this uh, will give you a little exposure out there and hopefully your phone will start ringing all right thanks willie i appreciate right. it enjoy have a great day right. take care right now. thanks